This video is a follow-up to an earlier video where I showed you how I created my deal pipeline inside of Asana. And the TLDR is basically, we used to have our deal pipeline inside of HubSpot. I wanted to have everything in Asana because I was managing deals in HubSpot, but all the tasks were then being moved over to Asana through workflows. And so I decided to put it all in Asana. And so if you haven't seen that video, go and watch that video. But this one's a follow-up to it where I'm gonna show you how some of the rules were created, some of the logic that we thought through. And then there was a question that was asked on the video about how we actually integrated HubSpot and Asana by using a tool called N8N. So you're gonna wanna stick around till the end for that. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Key. I am the founder and CEO of Surface. And we are a systems improvement consultancy and Asana partner. And I make videos like these every single week to help you get the most out of your Asana investment. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button. If you don't wanna do it right now, do it at some point throughout the video. This is gonna be a good one. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the video. Let's get into the demo. So first I'm gonna take you through the deal pipeline. This is obviously not the real deal pipeline. This is just a version of the deal pipeline. There are no contract value amounts, although I can probably just put some in. Typically what we do in this is we have a form that we, we fill out. It's not in this version of it. We have a form that we fill out that basically takes in all of the deal information. So we'd submit the deal, which is the, the company name. If we know the amounts, we'd put that in the form as well. And then it always lands in our new lead. So we've got actually two ways that these deals can enter the pipeline. We can enter it manually through a form in Asana or the second way, the one that is most common, that is most automated, is we have our HubSpot booking link. It's uh, this connect call link. You can get it in the description if you want to uh, have a connect call with us. And then once that call is booked, your company name gets routed through HubSpot and then automatically synced into our Asana deal pipeline. And again, I'll show you what that looks like at the end of this video. And so we've got all this information. We can set the project period of this. And so we've got all this info inside of here and anything that's filled out in the form, if you had to use the HubSpot booking link, you would answer a few questions. It'd be name, company, website, what your team size looks like, and then you know how we can help you. And so you're gonna give us a brief description of what your issues are and what you actually wanna chat about. So all that automatically come into this description, which is really nice. And so as you can see, there are various stages from new lead to connect call booked. That's where when you book a call, it would get automatically routed here our internal team would get an update to say, hey, we've got a new person that booked a connect call. And then either myself or an AE will jump on with you to discuss the next steps. And so once the connect call is completed, you can see there's lots of automations here that um, move it to the next stage. I'm not going to go through detail in all of them, but what I am going to do is just show you what some of those rules look like. So let's go into customize. We've got two things here. We just built out basic structure for you here so you can understand what this looks like. And I'm a huge fan of rules. So the first one here here is when the stage is changed on a custom field. So anytime we take one of these, these tasks, we can obviously change it and then it's going to move to the appropriate stage that we wanted. That's a really basic rule. But how we actually built that is what I want to show you in this case before we get any further. So rather than having like a list of like 17, 20 plus rules for all of the different changes that happen, we have one called stage build on or based on C field, custom field. And so this basically will write all the rules if we update what that field looks like. So check if it's new lead, move to section new lead. Otherwise, if check if it's connect call book, move to connect call book. And so that happens for all the stages inside of our deal pipeline. After we, we kick off and we have like closed one project, we move them to in project, which then adds them as a customer inside of our Asana deal pipeline and CRM. And then once the project is completed, say we've offboarded them then we move them to project complete they become a former client and then we add the former client tag and then they just become they come out of our active lists and then in the deal pipeline i'll show you in a second we've got um, some dashboards so that's what that one looks like and then we have the inverse because you're not always going to update that field sometimes you can just take the task and move it to the next section so we want to make sure that in both cases the action will still happen the task will still move to the next stage so now we just have hey if the section is this 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 this, this or that, you know, move it to that. So it's just another way to get the, the task to move through the stages. Now, throughout this, there are obviously tasks that need to be completed. And so what I mentioned off the top is we used to have our deal pipeline inside of HubSpot, and then there were sales tasks in HubSpot, but then there were like operations and delivery tasks that through a workflow went over to Asana. And so tasks were all over the place. Our delivery and operations team, PM, didn't have visibility all the time into the deal pipeline and all the automations and all the tasks 
tasks that the sales team was completing. And so it was just all over the place. And if there's one thing I don't like, it's, you know, teams that are not communicating and are not on the same page. It's literally the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. And so I moved to change that. And so that's why we're here. But because we wanted to have all the tasks in one place, now we have one rule that we call subtasks. And as the deal moves through the different stages, like so, we've got this new lead. You can see it creates two subtasks. Now they're not assigned to anyone right now, but this will be based on the deal owner. So in our actual version of the deal pipeline, we have different branches that says if the deal owner is Marquis to do this, if the deal owner is John to do this, if the deal owner is Terry, do do this, right? And so these will be assigned to that individual to first off connect with that lead on LinkedIn and then create the Google folder. Now our CSM actually creates the Google folder, would take the call recordings once we get to connect call completed, and then they would upload the call to the Google Drive as well. So those are our CSM tasks, but there's a mix of sales related tasks here, right? When we have that connect call, we have a subtask for the connect call. And this is actually the one of the questions I'm going to answer when I show you N8N at the end of this to show you how you can automate a lot of this as well. So we're adding subtasks as we go along and they're assigned to the relevant person. I may be a bit biased in saying so, but if you haven't already done it, I highly recommend subscribing to our newsletter, All Systems Go. Each week we deliver the latest news, blog posts, and even free resources on Asana and workflow optimization directly to your inbox. The best part, it's totally free. It's the perfect resource you're looking for to improve your system building skills and productivity through process improvements. All Systems Go is designed to be your go-to guide in navigating workflow optimization, especially if you're new to it. Click the link below to subscribe. Now let's back out. Because we're using the, the list view here, we can also do a board view where now we can just move the deal through the stages. If you prefer to see it like this, you can see the, the deal amount, you can see the deposit amount, who the, um, the deal owner is in this case, what the project period is, and what service they are purchasing, right? So you have a lot of this information, can really see it at a glance. And then we have our closed one opportunities here as well. They're waiting to kick off. We've got our active clients list here as well. We've got our closed lost, which I don't like, obviously, but we'll, what we do here is we also follow up with our closed lost leads. If it's 60, 90 days down the road, we can follow up with them, see how they're doing. And then in our version of it, we also have a dashboard as well. So we can see, let me go back to our list. We can see what the amount, what the total amount is, sorry, of closed one opportunities or proposal sent opportunities per proposal. So let me just actually go and do one of those. Why not? So we just create a chart and then we're looking at deal stage or we could do custom field. Let me see, what do I want to do here? Let's go custom field and we'll go total content contract here as well. And so we actually want to see the, the number that's there, right? So we'd switch it from a column and we go over to number right there. So this is the, the total contract value of everything that we have inside of this project. Okay. What we also want to do is we want to look at the deal stages and we want to exclude some deal stages because it really only matters to me what's in the prep proposal, what I have to prepare for, and then what's in the proposal sent as well. So closed one doesn't really matter in this case. I've already received that revenue. I don't need to see anything else. So now we know that there's a total of 35k inside of our prep proposal stage and proposal sent stage. This is a potential that we could have come into our business over, you know, the course of, of whatever. Okay. And then what I do is I base the, the amount on the close date. So anytime that a deal does come in, it's typically, you know, 30 to 45 days out, sometimes 60 or 90 days, sometimes a year and a half uh, before we're actually closing that deal. And so we want to then add in, you know, a due date. If the due date is within the next, however, so if the due date is within the next 30, you know, 30 months, 30 days or so, then we can get that information right now, but I'm just gonna remove it. So that's what that looks like. That's how you can create really um, quick dashboards, you know, um, to get the information that you need. Now, here is the moment you have been waiting for. And I'm gonna go back out to our first task here for this. It's not in that one. Where did I put it? There it is. So we actually had a question on this video. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And it's from 
Leonardo Gomez official. So this was four months ago. I did answer Leonardo, but I thought let me just create an update video on this. So Marky, your videos are great. Thank you so much. I learned a lot about Asana. I love when you leave comments like this. It makes me feel like I'm actually doing this for a good reason. I'm helping some people out. But one thing that caught my attention was that you used HubSpot to connect N8N. I also use both tools and I need to do some automation. When the lead is updated to a certain column, a task appears in HubSpot and in Asana. How did you manage to make HubSpot spot trigger authentication work on N8N. So I'm going to go over to N8N. So we've got a bunch of workflows set up here. Um, if you're not familiar with what N8N is, it's just an, an aggregator where all data will come through it. It's similar to Zapier or Make if you're more familiar with that. And so you have all of the, the connection points, all of the source points as well. So your different software platforms that you plug into this and it works as a third party integrator to connect the APIs essentially to do more detailed custom work that you can't do natively in a lot of the software platforms. So in this case, this is a four step process. And so again, the use case here is we have our HubSpot booking link to book a connect call. So wherever the link is, go book a connect call if you want to work with us. And then that trigger, once the, the call is booked, it then routes everything from HubSpot into Asana. So the detailed purpose of this is it listens for company creation events. So again, remember the deal name is always the company that we're creating. So that listens for that in HubSpot. And so when you put in your work email, if you're john at google.com, our, our deal is gonna be called Google in that case. It triggers the workflow when a company name is created, which likely indicates a new opportunity for a deal, right? So that's what the HubSpot trigger looks like. And then it's waiting for more information, okay? And then we go and it fetches the additional information related to the booked call from HubSpot, such as the original source of the booking. And so one of the things we receive when it comes in, there's a custom field let me go back over for a second. There is a custom field for, can't remember if I put it in this version or not. There it is. So source type, okay? So in our version of it, it actually matches the source types from HubSpot. So it could be direct traffic, email, organic search, organic social, referral, things like that. And so in our version of it, we're matched up with HubSpot. So it's gonna pull in what HubSpot sees as the original source, right? And then it's gonna route it here into Asana, which is really nice. And so it's taking all that information, all the information you would have filled out inside of your form and then it's it's holding on to it right it's it's finding what that hubspot contact id is and then it's finding out the asana id as well for that task and what we also have in our version of the deal pipeline that you'll see in that earlier video is that we have a custom field for the contact record in hubspot and then a custom field for the company record in hubspot as well and so obviously i'm not going to get super detailed into this today but if you wanted an overview of what this could look like this is how we have done it. Step three is to save those contact details. So this node is an extension of the initial base row. So base row is really just a database. So it takes all this information, it pulls it from HubSpot, it sends it to base row, it sits there for a while. That's where we aggregate all of the data. We're, we're cross-referencing the IDs, we're comparing information, we're making sure it all lines up before we actually send it into Asana. And this happens like in the matter of seconds. But base row is what we use to flow all the information through HubSpot then into Asana. We're then saving the call details. And then the last step here is within Asana, we're creating that Asana task, okay? And so that's when we see it come into the deal pipeline. So that's, again, the most common way that deal opportunities come in, unless we're creating them manually. And then we go another step. So on the date that you will book a connect call for, that subtask, that subtask that gets created when the connect call is booked, go down right here, right here, it's pulling in that date as well, okay? And so we can see the company name, we can see the date, it'll be assigned to the deal owner depending on the automations we set up. And then it's actually putting in the date of the connect call here, which aligns with what's actually in your Google Calendar or Outlook. So pretty cool, right? I know, I love it, it works for us. I know some people are thinking, why not HubSpot, why this? And for me, I mentioned this in the other video, but for me it was, we were on HubSpot and again, we were back and forth. We we're spending so much on HubSpot. We we're already using Asana. And so I thought, 
do we need to do it in HubSpot? And one of the things that I'll often say is just because it's the way you've always done it, it doesn't mean it's the right way. And we had always done it that way, but this way was so much better because now this integrates with other dashboards. My full team can be in here and see the deal opportunities. We can have all the subtasks in one place. We can get more detailed reporting. It just made so much more sense for us. So hope you like this. If you didn't, if you haven't uh, hit the, the like button yet, maybe you were just paying attention and you forgot to do it. Now's your opportunity. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this video. And again, if you found this video helpful or you think someone else needs to see this that works with you, please go and share it with them. And if you're interested in how you can integrate your different tools with Asana because you haven't been able to figure it out with these native tools, then reach out to us. Book that connect call in the, the link in the description. We would love to connect with you. Thank you for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.